At a time when the motor industry and cars in general seem to be changing rapidly and at an increasingly rapid rate, it's nice to be reminded that some things never change. Things like this Morgan 4.4 for instance, a car which was launched in 1936, last had a facelift in 1955 and was made right through until 2018. Is a car of this vintage really viable and practical in the 2020s? We'll talk about that more when we get behind the wheel and see what it's all about. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. I think that might be the best sounding Ford CVH engine I've ever heard. Here we are in the Morgan 4.4, an automotive institution, a British institution really, and also the world's newest old car or the world's oldest new car, depending on which way you want to look at it. And that really cuts straight to the heart of what the deal is with Morgans and why some people love them and a lot of people don't love them, shall we put it. Because what we're fundamentally dealing with here is a car from 1936 that you could still buy in 2018. So it was launched in an era when Neville Chamberlain hadn't yet talked about peace in our time, when television wasn't a thing, and where you could still buy a brand new Austin 7 Ruby. It took you right through after a certain UK referendum about Europe and in the era of streaming and Amazon Prime and the Nissan Leaf. And people who know Morgans will give you a long list of changes that happened to the 4 for over its long life and will explain how really a 2018 4.4 isn't the same car at all as the one from 1936 but fundamentally they are. It's the same thing as other long-lived classics like the Mini. Why was it such an enduring model? Why did it survive so long? And obviously Morgan is not a mass production car. It's not like they were churning them out by the hundreds of thousands or the millions. This isn't a Toyota Corolla or a Volkswagen Golf. But why did enough people across all those decades want a car from the 30s that stayed fundamentally unchanged right through into the second decade of the 21st century. And really on this little bit of twisty road it's very easy to see why because this thing is an absolute boot to drive. Morgan is the root of all the evolution of the classic British sports car genre. That's a genre that encompasses some of the most loved classics in the world and the Morgan was here before them and it was still here a long time after them. It saw out MG Triumph Austin Healy, and they're still making them today, they're still around. It's not back to basics, because they never went away from it. It's retaining the basics. You have an engine in the front, gearbox in the middle, you have a live axle at the back, you have a separate chassis, a lightweight body that's only really there to keep the rain off, to stop people sticking their hands in the whirly mechanical bits, weather protection that's just flapping sheets of canvas with little slidey perspex windows, and it's all about, not even performance, it's about eking performance from humdrum components and making it involving and fun, capable to drive. It is raw, it's very direct, there's absolutely no damping or synthesis between anything that's happening with the car and your senses. It plugs directly in, but it's not intimidating, it's not anything like a, say, an Austin Healey 3000. This thing is very, very responsive and delicate and it sits on the road very nicely, it's just not feeling like I'm in danger or... Yes, it's cam and peg steering, it's pre-war steering, steering systems that other sports car makers moved away from in the 1950s, yet yeah, it just works, it, you guide it round, it's quite quick, it's very responsive, and the ride is very classic, short travel, quite fierce damping, but because it's so light, because it's made out of lightweight steel channel chassis with a wood frame body, aluminium panels, the fact that it's got very little suspension travel doesn't mean it crashes, yeah you can see it's jiggling here over this slightly washboardy surface, but it's a sports car, but it's not jarring your kidneys out. It wouldn't really feel the same if it was just gliding over the road or soaking up the bumps as well as something like MGB. There we go, it just went over a big tree root and I sort of hopped out of my seat a bit. But it's not uncomfortable and that is what the Morgan is. It's that essence of sporting motoring through the ages. And of course through the ages it evolved, if only because the chosen engine suppliers that Morgan relied on kept selfishly retiring their engines and making newer ones that wouldn't fit or weren't suitable. So this one is a 1984, which means that it has, under that louved bonnet, quite a modern engine. It has a Ford CVH engine. 
So that's overhead cam, lean burn. It works. The engine itself, I'm not a great fan of the CVH engine. It's found itself in a lot of high performance and performance orientated stuff, almost despite itself. It's mostly because of its availability. But here, it's really nice. This one's running based in the same tune as an Escort XR3 on a single Quincho carburetor, custom manifold, so it fits into the Morgan engine bay, which is narrow and long. And as you can hear, it makes a really cracking noise. And when you kick it up to about 3000 RPM or so, it's really responsive. And yeah, the Morgan's not fast. I suspect this diesel Renault Scenic in front of me could probably get away from me, but he's not having anything like as much fun and it feels faster than he actually did. Here I am, I'm doing 45 and this feels invigorating. Because this is a 1984 car, not only do we have a CVHH, we have a five-speed gearbox. Again, Ford Type 9 gearbox. This is one of the very first five-speed organs. It's got a lovely mechanical action, a very narrow gait. It's just a fantastic experience and really you have to drive a Morgan to really get what it's all about. If you're thinking the world of Morgans is a very rarefied thing, it's not for me, well consider this one. Because this is a 4.4, 1.6, four-seater, this is not ticking off the boxes in the world of Morgan. The Morgan connoisseurs prefer other cars. Closest as you can get to being an entry-level Morgan and it's the truly practical Morgan. All the mechanical bits are Ford Escort essentially, or Ford Sierra. You've got four-seater, so if you've got a family, if you've got children, they can go in the back. The price is even quite accessible as well. This one's up for sale at the moment for a smidge under £15,000, which is a big chunk of money. Yes, you could get uh, other classic sports cars for less than that, but equally, you could buy other classic sports cars for a lot more. So, Morgan 4.4, can it be practical? I think this one certainly could be. Enough power to be fun, not enough power to be scary. Grassroots bread and butter mechanical bits. The four-seater option on the 4.4 came and went over the years, but this is one. You could get two adults there. Backrest folds down so you've got luggage space. An accessible price and special support is brilliant. You could rebuild it from the ground up if you wanted to. I think more generally, if you haven't driven a Morgan before or you dismiss them as vintage curiosities, no. Try and get behind the wheel of one, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Because for me, this is one of the finest classic cars there is. This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.